In this video, we're going to go back to a foundational basic. We're interested in how computers store negative numbers. Now, let's remind ourselves about what are called unsigned integer. An unsigned integer is an integer that has no negative possibility of storing a negative number. Now, to keep things simple, we're going to work in the framework of a byte. A byte is eight binary digits. So a byte looks like this. So here's the byte that registers zero. Here's one. Okay. And this keeps continuing until we get to, and this we know to be 255. Okay, so this is one, here's two, or no, that's zero, whoops. Oh, come on, yeah, there we go, zero. Here's one, here's two, okay, and the, the way we know how binary work, numbers work, the, this is the ones place, twos, fours, 16s, 32, 64, 128. Oh, whoops. One, two, four, eight, 16, 32, 64, 128. Okay, so the largest possible number that can be stored in a byte in, uh, in an unsigned format is 200. And 55. Now, let me tell you an essential fact of life that you want, that, that, that's important for you to know. Computers have no hardware to subtract. Computers can only add. They cannot subtract. So, we have to keep this in mind when we try to find some clever way of encoding negative numbers. Now, we know this. In the world of a byte, we can, we can encode as many as 255 distinct possibilities. That's a hard limit. So, what are we going to do? Well, here, let's make a temp number one. What you do, one idea that a lot of people might think is a good idea, is something like this. Say I have the number two. Okay, I'm going to, I'm going to take this first digit and reallocate it to being what is called a sign bit. And the sign bit will be zero if the number is positive. So, here we can see we have positive 2. Now let's make negative 5. Well, in that case, what you do is you turn that bit on. And you go like that. Now let's see if ripple carry addition works here. So I'm going to go ahead and put an equal sign down here. Okay. Now, I'm doing Mrs. Wormwood's addition. A one goes there. Hey, a one goes here. One and zero. Zero and one. And the rest of these guys, there's a zero here, a zero here. Okay, and then there's a one. And so if we read our encoding, what we see here is we have one zero 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 one one one. Uh oh. That's minus seven. Now maybe we could do some games with flipping bits and you can do that and you get a sort of satisfactory solution, but you still end up with this awkwardness. This is zero, right? This is negative zero. So zero and negative zero were stored as distinct values. That's a second problem. 
Ah, this is not working. So what are we going to do instead? Well, here's a rather clever little idea. What we're going to do is we're going to take that lead digit and we're going to make it a minus 128th place. Okay, then comes 64 and all the usual places do their usual things. 16, 8, 4, 2, 1. All right, let's try to get 2 in here. 2 is not negative, and so automatically, if a number's positive, you know that digit's 0. So that sort of agrees with this previous encoding scheme we had. Now you can see a zero's got to go here, 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 from what we know about binary numbers, and we get a one zero. And so there's two. Two looks exactly the same in this encoding scheme. Now let's look at negative five. A okay, minus five. Because it's negative, you've got to have this. All right, so that leaves us at negative 128. Let's add back in 64. We have 60, negative 64, negative 32, negative 16, negative 8. If we add a 4, we're at negative 4. We're too big, so we're going to skip that bad boy. And then the 2 and the 1. Oops. You add that negative 3 that comes from there, and here we are. Okay, we're now at negative 5. So now let's attempt ripple carry addition here and see what happens. Okay, so we're in Mrs. Wormwood's math class. And so we just need to pay attention to what we're doing. 1. Okay. Now, 1 and 1 are going to give me a 0. All right, I'm going to do this. Excuse me a moment while I go into what's called replace mode. That will make things easier. Okay, so 1 and 1 make 0, and we carry a 1 into the force column. So we get a 1 here. Ooh. We get a 1 here. A 1 here. A 1 here. A one here, a one here, and so you might wonder what has happened. We have this fantastic looking thing here, all right. Um, that doesn't look so good, but this is how we should be encoding the number negative three. This is the encoding of negative three. And it looks kind of funny. All right, now let's play around with this a little bit. Let's figure out, oh, what number is this? Let's try this number on for size. That number is negative 128. See that? That's negative 128. Okay, now let's go pattern shopping here. Okay, we put a 1 here, we get negative 127. All right. This is negative 126. All right. And you might wonder, how do I decode this kind of strange thing? Let's put 3 down here, right next to it. Let's see what 3 looks like and see if we can figure out how to break this code. 3 looks like this. There's a 0 here, 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 a 0 here. Yes, a 1 here, a 1 here. Now let's look at these two numbers. Oh my, look at that. Do you see how all these bits are flipped here, except the last one? It's not quite 
doesn't seem to be quite right. I wonder what's going on with that. Well, let's go in the middle here. And let's flip every bit in here. Zero, 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 one, zero. What's interesting is we're off by one. We're off by one. However, it turns out that this is th 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 this scheme actually works. If you flip the bits and add one, you negate a number. Okay, flipping the bits and adding one. Hey, let's just let's just pick something at random here. Let's take the number twenty-seven. Okay. There's no negative 128, there's no 64, there's no 32, there's a 16, that leaves 11, there's an 8, that leaves 3, there's no 4, okay, that should be 27, 3 plus 24, yes, that's 27, and let's make sure that, okay, good, I'm going to stick a space in the middle here. So we're looking at groups of four instead of a group of eight. But that space has no significance. Now, let's try our scheme of getting minus 27. Okay, so for minus 27, what we need to do is flip all the bits here. One, oh, come on, get back up there. One, one, zero, zero, one, one. Oh, zero, zero. Now, you add one. So flip the bits and add one, and you get that bit pattern. Okay, now let's put our equal sign underneath. And let's do the Wormwoodian procedure. All right, I'm going to go ahead and do that. Now, one plus one is zero. Oh, come on. There we go. That's a zero. Ooh, carry a one up here, and we have one plus one plus zero. Oh, one plus one is a zero, my bad. Let me fix that. Okay, carry a one. Okay, so there's one plus one in this column, and that's a zero. Carry a one. We get another zero, carry a one, get another zero, carry a one. And this keeps happening. And then you finally get this. But that falls off the end of a byte into something called the bit bucket. And it's not seen. So you can see that this scheme works. So the way we encode negative numbers is we can find the bit pattern for the positive number, flip the bits, and add one, and you get that for the negative number. And the beauty is that ripple carry addition actually works. Now, let's have a little fun here and write a very small Java program, which I shall name after my friend Gotwalls. Public class got walls. All right. And so we're just going to put a main in here so we can execute this. And we're going to do a crazy thing. Now, you've seen the while loop in Python. Well, Java's got one too. And it's really not different at all. I'm going to declare an integer and I'm going to set it equal to zero. Now I'm going to do the following thing. While n is greater than 0, I'm going to increment n. The plus plus operator adds 1 to the variable. Okay? It adds 1, so that's called the auto increment operator. And when we discuss the primitive types, 
in the next video, we will discuss this plus plus. But for now, just know that it adds 1 to n. Okay, so I've made this program. And you look at this program, and you might just say, oops, I meant to say byte here. Although this will work for an integer too. But let's do it for a byte. Okay, so byte is one of Java's primitive types, and it is a one byte integer stored in this format we've we've created here, which is known as two's, two's complement. So when we run this program, well, let's go ahead and print out n at the end. All right, system dot out. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and print that out. <clears throat> now let's run it. And you'll see, it happily compiled. Ooh. Oh, you know what we forgot to do? We did a very silly thing. Let's just knock that up to one. Ooh, what happened here? What you see here is something called type overflow. You would think that this number would just keep getting bigger and bigger without bounds and this program would hang. But no, let's talk about what happens underneath. So what happens is we start out. Okay, here's one. Okay, on the second execution of the loop, that happens. All right, and this keeps happening, okay? Keeps happening, and finally, we're going to get down to here. And this is 127. That is the number 127. Now watch what happens. On the next increment, and this is this this double plus command simply increments this thing as an unsigned integer but we know what this is oh we take the 7 we know it's negative because of the one in the lead and we take this these 7 bytes we flip them all okay okay so we have 1 2 3 Four, five, six, seven, and this looks like negative 127. But to complete the process, okay, we have to add one here as an unsigned integer, and the result is negative 128. Okay, so you're going to get, you get negative 128. So this thing goes all the way up and then donuts around to the bottom. Okay, this is, this is an example of an error caused by something called type overflow. A compiler will not catch this. Java's runtime system will not catch this. This will cause a logic error in your program. And it's all because of the F word. The F word in computing is finite. Java can only store integers of finite sizes. And in the interest of efficiency, they're kept relatively small. So now you know about two's complement notation and how computers store signed numbers. Next time, what we're going to talk about is the four integer types in Java's primitive type system.